Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, dear brothers and sisters in Muslim space. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali, sabi ajma'in, wa man wala amma ba'd. Um, Jazakallah khair for uh, joining us, um, whether you are here live or you are uh, streaming in, watching the live stream, or inshallah seeing this at any future time. Um, uh, it, it's that time of year that uh, the month that so many of us, uh, whether we've uh, anticipated um, with much anxiety or those of us who've looked forward to it uh, or those of us who've just been waiting for our masajid to get us the calendar so we know what times we can start to wake up and eat, um, that, that month is just around the corner. Um, just in a few days here, inshallah, uh, Ramadan, the month of the uh, doors of paradise being open um, is, is upon us. And so uh, here at Muslim Space, um, as has been done in the past, uh, we, we would like to give uh, a space for um, our uh, community members, for families, for anybody else to be able to uh, get ready for this month. Uh, as always, you know, there's there's no um, you know magic bullet when it comes to uh, getting ready for Ramadan. Some folks take months for preparation, so there's there's so many different things that people do to prepare for Ramadan. Um, but uh, what what we hope to offer you is a way to help make Ramadan a substantive uh, and very holistic experience. And so, uh, Sister Yasmin and uh, uh, our late uh, beloved Mufti uh, Muhammad. Ismail uh, Rahimullah um, would conduct this workshop um, and uh, you know just just help uh, the community prepare for Ramadan uh, on, on the aspects of the faith uh, the spiritual um, as well as the body the mind and the soul and so covering these aspects and and just getting the most out of this really blessed month um, and so uh, as mentioned um, sister Yasmin and I uh, have the esteemed honor to be able to continue that tradition um, and inshallah impart um, some things in in this uh, in this discussion in this conversation and presentation for you that might be of benefit uh, for uh, you as well as anyone else uh, that is in your home uh, and beyond that this Ramadan uh, this workshop itself can be a source of benefit for you uh, can be a source that helps you uh, take in this Ramadan as maybe uh, something very different than before um, that you can get the most out of it communally even in a time of uh, you know COVID pandemic even if we're, we're, we're isolating and distancing um, you, you can still make the most out of it uh, in, in the communal sense the social sense uh, but also in a sense that uh, of your, your personal fulfillment uh, and not just in terms of limited to the uh, adhkar or the duas um, or um, the the tarawi, the prayers, all that that is uh, in the Quran that is there in the staple of uh, Ramadan, um, but also uh, that which can really give us some uh, soulfulness and some sustenance. So I will um, uh, I will uh, pass the torch here to Sister Yasmin to uh, carry us to the first part uh, of our presentation here um, about kind of like kind of making uh, Ramadan uh, so much more um, than it often comes to be in, in a definition sense. So, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll come right after Sister Yasmin um, with, with a few things, but uh, Sister Yasmin, the floor is yours, please. All right, Assalamu alaikum, you guys. I am so glad to be here. I just realized I haven't presented a PowerPoint in quite some time, but... I think that's all you got to do. All right. So um, I am really excited to talk about Ramadan. If you know me well, then you know I look forward to Ramadan every year. I get excited for it. And um, every year is different, but there's always something that I love about it. So um, I hope to share with you some of the things that really uh, make it special to me. I, I'm going to let Osama talk about more of the spiritual aspects, and I'm going to talk a lot more about the practical resources, um, things that are very much an American Ramadan experience and contribute to a very much American Ramadan experience, things that I found helpful, so hopefully um, you might find benefit in them as well. So first, I just want to check in and do a little readiness check-in, if you could put in the chat if you're on live, uh, an emoji of your choosing, you can even be creative and put in a GIF or a meme to tell me how you are feeling about the coming of Ramadan. Are you feeling ready? Are you feeling excited? Are you feeling like um, you cannot trust the calendar because it must be lying to you, telling you that it's coming up next week? However you feel, no right or wrong answer. And um, 
you don't worry, you don't have to share my enthusiasm for the month. I see, I see some, see a heart. Let's see. I guess you can put your, your feeling on your name. So good, some cla a clap, I, I get, I feel good about that. Your reactions, nice. Okay, so looking good so far. I also actually wanna do a quick little activity with you. So close your eyes. Sorry, I don't know how to make this little thing go away. Um, close your eyes and think about your best memory of Ramadan ever, like your highlight, like the best, either your best Ramadan or the best moment within Ramadan that you have ever experienced. And think about what are the things that made that so special to you? Who were the people that were involved? What were the feelings that were involved? What are the things that you did, the actions, uh, either yours or others that contributed to that? Um, what made it so special to you? If you feel comfortable sharing, you're welcome to share. If I see any hands raised or anybody unmute in the next couple of minutes, but also don't feel, don't feel pressured to share something. So um, I'll tell you one of the most special moments for me in Ramadan, and it's one that comes annually. And it is at the end of Ramadan, when I am exhausted and um, it is the last nights of Ramadan and uh, we are at the mosque for the Qiyam al-Layl and um, it's dark, you know, they keep the lights low, it's full of people and um, it's that moment in prayer where the Imam raises his hand and makes dua and everybody is collectively just humbled and vulnerable in front of God together. Even the people who are leaders and you, you know usually show their strongest side are there humbled before God. And that is something that every single year, like that is what fills me up in Ramadan. And I cannot wait until the next year to experience again. Like that is one of my favorite. Um, let's see. Middle of the night pancakes of whores. I see in the chat. That is also one of my favorite Ramadan's um, memories. And my kids probably love that the most. One of my kids had a birthday during Ramadan and we went for uh, Suhoor celebration. I know that was one of her favorite. Um, and I think it's important to think about that before Ramadan starts. Think about what has made it special for you in the past. Um, because you want to be able to use this month as a way to fill yourself, right? You want to be able to fill your heart. And I know we get, you know, lots of memes about things like, uh, how Ramadan Muslims, like suddenly people become religious in Ramadan, but you know what? God created us in a very intentional way that we cannot be at the same level all the time, Right. Ramadan is that chance to recharge, to step it up, to, you know, try and do better. And hopefully that carries us through, you know, carries us through a lot of the year. So even if there are things you don't do generally, during Ramadan is still a time where you can step it up. It's a chance for you to like decide who you want to be in that year and kind of increase, you know, the positivity of whatever it is that you think you want to do better, be better um, at, be more mindful of. Um, and I see also in the chat being together with friends and family, those are all important parts of Ramadan. And so I think give, taking that moment to think about what has made it for you special in the past gives you that chance to do it for yourself and also gives you a chance to think about if you have children or if you have a partner or if you have other people in your life, that it's your opportunity to make it special for them too. Maybe not doing the exact same things but maybe something that brings that similar feeling, right? That similar understanding. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on these topics, mindfulness and learning, virtual iftars, community, kids, celebration, meal planning and fitness and charity. 
um, because I think there are a lot of really great practical resources available to us that I wanna make sure that we all have access to um, in case any of them speak to us or are relevant to us in our own lives. So the first one is some um, resources that I find helpful. And the first is the productive Muslim. If you're a fan, you're a fan, right? You, if you know, you know. <laughs> um, a lot of people really appreciate the practical resources, especially for modern professional Muslims. I don't know, a lot of people hate the term modern Muslims, but I think it explains like a mindset of, um, you know, a person who is, is striving and seeking um, in contemporary times. And so uh, I think Productive Muslim offers a lot of resources that really speak to a certain type of lifestyle. And I feel like learning is something that, uh, you know, is something we push ourselves towards even more during Ramadan. And even what we listen to in the background of our lives can make a difference. And so I really like the, I really like podcasts in general, um, but I especially like this Eucharist Hub podcast that they have lots of different topics, very interesting, a lot of learning that can be done. And we're so fortunate that in the time of, uh, you know, everything being remote, we have access to scholars and information that we've never had before, right at our fingertips. And one of those is Yaqeen Institute, where, I mean, uh, Imam Omar Suleiman, uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi, um, and so many other great teachers are just a click away. So I think that is a great learning resource. Also, I like the spirituality um, and the practice of uh, the Ta'adif uh, Collective. They have two locations, but uh, online, they do lots of recitations, uh, lots of uh, reflective, kind of more, um, uh, more spiritually focused activities that I really have enjoyed throughout the year. And I think during Ramadan, uh, it will not be any difference. And just for general learning, um, Seeker's Guidance is a great resource. And also um, two little things that I find interesting. One is the Dorat Journal. I haven't purchased it or seen it in real life yet. I've just read about it. And it seems like a great resource because it gives you an opportunity to um, be more intentional and focused and actually write things down. And we know when we write things down, it works out a little bit different in our brain than if we just think about it and it goes away, right? Writing it down has a different impact on us. And um, for people who enjoy meditation and having that calm, there is an app called Sabir and you have to uh, pay for the monthly subscription if you want access to all of the meditations, but they're Islamic uh, focused meditations that uh, cover just a wide variety of topics. And if you're a person who likes to have that quiet and calm and make that part of your practice, uh, that's a great uh, resource for the Muslim community. And then something else that um, is kind of special during uh, times of everyone living remotely is virtual iflars. There are multiple um, places where you can go to connect with people, especially if you're alone um, or you have, you know, you don't have a lot of people where you're at to connect with. There are two resources. One is shoulder to shoulder campaign where they, they connect, um, you know, small groups or households together for iflars so that people are not alone, uh, you know, so that they get to connect and Sometimes it's people of other faith communities and things like that. So there's a sharing learning component as well. Most of us usually attend interfaith iflars during normal years. Um, And since we probably won't have as much access to that this year, this is an opportunity to still have that sharing as part of your tradition. And then another one is called Alone in Ramadan, um, which is also an online Ramadan uh, iftar project. And uh, it's primarily organized through a Facebook group, but it's an opportunity where people who are alone have the opportunity to connect with others for iflar um, so that they can have that experience of sharing iflar. Very good, especially if you're in a rural area or if you just want the chance to connect with other people. And then I went and scoured our local mosques uh, uh, websites so you don't have to. And I found out that 
uh, NAMCC and Muslim Space are really leading the way in making sure that all their Ramadan activities are clear and online. Um, NAMCC even had this awesome little graphic, oops, sorry, this awesome little graphic, let me see if I can minimize this, this awesome graphic that um, shows the, the daily, weekly, and uh, special events during Ramadan. Um, and there are a couple of places that are going to be having Tarawiyah in person, ICGA and Oasis, and it looks like ICLT will also, um, and uh, others will be having them, uh, and also NAMCC, um, and also uh, others will be having them online. Uh, and Muslim Space has lots of really innovative programs, uh, morning dhikr, uh, Quran recitation in the, in the evenings, weekly halakas, also some wellness and meditation activities. And I'll get more into the kids' activities later. And also NAMCC, I just wanted to point out because they have a new imam who, uh, who is younger, who works a lot more with the youth. They do have a lot of activities that are more specifically focused on uh, younger Muslims. And then next, going into a little bit more about uh, kids, uh, you know, opportunities for kids, there is this um, company called Newer Kids. I'm not sure if you know it, but if you do, you probably love it like I do. Um, it is a subscription book service. So they write these cute little comic, kind of like comic books. I know there's a word for them, another word for them instead of comic books, but um, cute little books that are based on comics on uh, young, a young American Muslim family um, and some friends who are based on the author and his, his community. And um, they are so well written. My kids, you know, my seven year old particularly actually loves them. And they come every month or every couple of months and uh, great stories for kids, very relevant, very, um, you know, fun to read with them. They have little activities in them as well. And during Ramadan, they're doing this special Ramadan camp for kids. So if you're members and you already get like the, um, the book subscriptions, then it's free uh, to sign up for this camp. If not, it's $179 for the month to register your kids. And also the Muslim Space Kids Ramadan activities, super fun, had to give them a shout out. The story time, um, we didn't make last year because it was really early in the morning and I could not, but this year, I think, you know, I think we're definitely going to be able to check it out by 11. Um, and also the aid card exchange was so fun. I love to be able to be creative with my kids and use that as an opportunity for them to, to get excited and, um, you know, where we make something together that somebody else is going to receive. This feels really special. And then also to receive things is um, so exciting for kids to get things in the mail and the Ramadan arts and crafts. I mean, those are super, um, innovative and thoughtful and creative and having the opportunity to do those for, you know, only $10 in supplies is pretty, a pretty awesome experience that we're lucky to have here in Austin. And then something else for kids is that if your kids are in school, um, a lot of parents, um, you know, make a special effort to contact their school and offer to share a book with the child's class. Because in met for many kids, I know for me, when I was a kid, I was the only Muslim in my class. And that's the case for a lot of Muslims in Austin as well. And so getting the chance to share something that's special about Ramadan, about Eid is a really nice way to engage in community and participate in community. And these are some books that um, have been recommended. It's Ramadan Curious George, because who doesn't love, you know, a Ramadan book about a monkey looking for the moon. And Layla's Lunchbox is about a little girl's first time fasting, really cute. Um, Golden Domes and Silver Lanterns is a really beautiful book. Um, and Ramadan Moon is also another one that's recommended. And if you go to the website that's linked here below and you can, uh, I'm glad to send it to you after um, as well, is uh, Scholastic has everything you need, like everything a teacher would need. So definitely everything you would need, um, but something you could share with the teacher as well, as far as uh, videos, decorations, worksheets, 
um, activities they can do. And they have it broken down by grade, like pre-K uh, all the way up through fifth grade. So it gives you um, lots to look at and go to in one place um, or that you could share with your teacher. And I know when I was a kid, it was really um, special to me when my mom came and, and shared about Ramadan. And um, I'm sure for kids today, that's also very similar where there's still uh, oftentimes the, a lot of um, just unfamiliarity with Muslims on a personal level. And so this gives you a chance to share something fun, um, you know, fun and, and light. And I think on the Scholastic page, there's even something about like recipes and cooking. So um, if people are virtual, it's not as fun because you don't get to share sweet things. But um, for those people who are back in person, um, there's even some thoughts on what to bring as far as treats. And then the next part is decorate and celebrate. So for a lot of people, this is a really important part of their celebration of like getting in the mood is like making their space look in the mood. I am not great about this, but I did take my daughter to uh, Party City. You can see up there on the right. And it's, there's something so special about just walking into a store and being like, hey, there's Eid decorations and normal bond decorations. And they're actually really nice, you know? Um, so that was really fun. I also, you know, have ordered some things in the past. So we do have a little bit of decorating going on, but I am not Pinterest ready for sure. But there's something that kind of gets you in the mood and gets you festive when you do that. Um, even we put our Ramadan Karim sign up on our door outside and kind of send that message to ourselves and everybody kind of get in that mode. Um, and I listed in addition to Party City, some great places online are Simply Impressions, of course, Fazia here in Austin um, runs that with beautiful wall decals and decorations. And Days of Eid, um, they, um, the pictures across the top, those are pictures from Days of Eid of some of the different things that they offer. And uh, Etsy is filled with amazing creative ideas and of course, Pinterest. And also Crescent Star Creations has some great things. And um, for some of the activities that I've been seeing online, uh, cookie making, um, the cookie cutters that are shown in this picture are from Walmart. So everybody's getting on board now. And um, the special little prayer space is something that's becoming, becoming like very popular during Ramadan. I think it's so cute and it brings together um, not just the festivity, but also the practice and makes a special place, place for you to be connecting with God and your children. And, um, it's something so nice, especially if you have the space for it. And then uh, Ramadan calendars. We have one where we just count down, like every day we put a new star on our calendar. Um, there's also people who go more along an advent calendar route and they sell them commercially. They sell them on Etsy. They sell them everywhere where it has something special connected to each day, a gift, a thought, an activity, something like that, that makes each day special. And, uh, you know, you can't beat a gingerbread mosque. So, you know, it doesn't even have to be gingerbread. You can make it out of any type of cookie thing, but, you know, just making special things that are obviously Muslim as well as personally connected to our celebration and our cultures and traditions. And another big part is sharing in celebration with other people. So um, it's, you know, a lot of people have been making gift boxes that they give to their neighbors or their friends, like the ones on the right side that I got from Pinterest. Um, and there are companies that actually make gift boxes uh, for Ramadan that are there on the bottom. Um, and uh, also, you know, traditional uh, sweets from um, overseas or from here, wherever you like. And then also, of course, you can't forget the best part of celebrating is on Eid if we have any type of you know, community celebration or carnival, making sure that that's something we plan into our schedule from the beginning. And earlier I talked about Productive Muslim and I found on their website, they have this great resource. And it is uh, a meal plan for every day of Ramadan that includes exercise. And it also has the recipes with it. So it's pretty amazing. It has everything spelled out from beginning to end for uh, the entirety of Ramadan. Here are just two um, samples from it, not the entirety of it, but um, it gives you a good idea if you 
really want to make sure that this is like your healthiest Ramadan ever. It gives you great practical, tangible ideas on how to do that every single day. And then of course, charity is something so important and there are so many great opportunities to give uh, in our community. And, um, you know, of course we all have the Kat al Fitr that we can give almost anywhere in our community. And um, also I wanted to share the sponsor and iftar opportunity for Nuasis. It's uh, three, it's $1,350 per day for the entirety of iftar, or you can um, do a third of a slot for 450 or 900 for uh, two thirds of a day. Um, so there's something for everyone. And then also Islamic Relief is a charity that um, works around the world and they have specific Ramadan uh, family food boxes where you can feed a family for the entire month of Ramadan for $100. And you can choose which region of the world. Um, and there are some special ones highlighted and things like that where your money goes a long way. And what a special way during Ramadan to give um, is, you know, to give, give food, right? Um, and then also a really innovative uh, Ramadan campaign, giving campaign is through Launch Good, where you can choose your daily, like you can choose an amount of, uh, that you wanna give every day and it'll automate and you can choose where you wanna give and all of those things, like you can be very specific about it or you can just make it as general as you want, but it's an opportunity to give every day of Ramadan, even if it's just a small amount um, and they do all the work for you. So you just, um, you know, put in your information and they'll do the rest for you. You could even do challenges and try and, you know, get certain amounts or certain things and make your own goals within, but that website is a great place to start there. And also of course, acts of charity. So, um, you know, some of us give through money and some of us give through our times and talents, right? Our time and talents. So there are so many ways to give within, uh, our community. A lot of it is uh, virtual now, of course, but there are so many things around us, right in our neighborhoods, um, you know, right outside of our homes where we can make a difference for people around us in a very tangible way. And um, there are organizations and even online, if you look up uh, giving opportunities and volunteer opportunities, there are so many in Austin. We have one of the highest per capita rates of nonprofits, percentages of nonprofits. So there is no shortage of places who are who would welcome your giving. So that is all I have for now, but I would love to talk to you more about um, other thoughts and ideas that you have, answer any questions that you have. And uh, now I'm gonna pass it back to Osama. Jazakallah khair, Sister Yasmin. Um, that was so, so well put together. And uh, I'm having uh, buyer's remorse for not uh, leasing the real estate you offered on the PowerPoint. It's such a nice looking PowerPoint, alhamdulillah. Um, so uh, folks, you may have to look at me for a little bit, but inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you all Sister Yasmin's PowerPoint as well. And if that's all right with you, Sister Yasmin, um, just as it's a tremendous resource, just looking through it, um, you know, from, uh, just in terms of uh, making the most of Ramadan um, and anywhere from like the, the comfort of your phone to uh, just getting involved in the community and getting getting around there. So thank you so much, Sister Yasmin, um, for that. Uh, so for, for folks who, who, who are here with us live, um, you know, just you can put this in the chat, you can uh, do a reaction uh, on Zoom. Um, how many of y'all have uh, when, when Ramadan has been presented to you in the past, uh, if in a khutbah or just by parents or friends or whatnot, has been framed in the way of like, hey, it's kind of like a race. It's it's a limited time. Do every single thing you can. And you have this pressure. It's kind of fr framed around like a race um, or like a sprint. Um, how many of y'all have had a uh, kind of image around Ramadan that's been given to y'all uh, of, of that sort said, hey, it's it, you, you have this much time. Do the most of what you can and just run with it. Um, and I, I see some folks raising their hands, uh, seeing it in the chat. So exactly. And, and, and this has just been kind of how, how, how we've been uh, conditioned from growing up, especially given that uh, Ramadan uh, you know, only comes 
once a year, uh, you know, we, we, we want to absolutely make the most of it. We absolutely do want to uh, do what we can with the limited time that we have. Um, however, there's, there's a few different things uh, in, in terms of how we go about it. Um, you know, when, when we traditionally look at uh, Ramadan as uh, this, you know, this time of year that, that will only come once, we, we definitely want to make the most of it. But oftentimes we sometimes jump into uh, such a month uh, and, you know, go into high gear and we come back out uh, just like just like we do after like a, an intense hike or an intense kind of marathon or an intense uh, sprint. We're just gassed uh, and we're just like, uh, you know, we, we, we really look forward to uh, Eid and we really look forward to the iftar times. Uh, and then um, as soon as Shawal comes around, we're just like, oh, man, that was that was something else. Just because we are operating at such a high frequency um, in terms of doing so much. Um, but uh, what, what, what can really help is in terms of how we look at uh, Ramadan, um, not so much maybe as a sprint, but a marathon. Um, you know, uh, people who run uh, will tell you that speed is not necessarily everything in the marathon. It's endurance. Um, and one thing I've been talking to folks about in uh, our chaplaincy sessions and in, in our spiritual connection groups has been uh, looking at Ramadan uh, not so much as even a kind of a race, uh, but looking at Ramadan as something that uh, is akin to uh, going up the summit of a mountain. And if you imagine that mountain to be like Mount Everest, uh, rarely, if ever, will you maybe find somebody that's going to be like, all right, I'm going to run it all up in one, one go, and I'm going to run back down in one go. It just feels physically impossible. It feels just like, you know, just thinking about it, you might get anxious, but there's just so much that, that logistically it's just hard to do in terms of running up a side of the mountain. Um, most mountains are actually built like that. They, they have their intricate crevices for you to get, get up there. Um, but Ramadan, if approached in a manner that is you're going up steadily, you're checking in with yourself at certain points, you're, you're using it, you're climbing up that ladder, you're climbing up that summit um, in a way that uh, gives your body that rest, a way that gives your soul that rest. Um, it will become a much more fulfilling experience than just diving in with everything that you've got and then expecting to keep that same deal um, from the time before. Because oftentimes that might be the case and that we will put our best foot forward. We will do all of our fasts. We will go to the Qiyama Layl. We will have uh, maybe try and push for a Juz a day. We will do all this stuff. Uh, and then as soon as Ramadan ends, we're like, oh man, we'll, we'll save it for next Ramadan. Um, and so we, we, we definitely want to make the most of uh, what we do, but we also want to do uh, approach Ramadan in a way that we leave Ramadan, once we come off of that mountain, uh, we, we leave there with some gems, we leave there uh, being changed human beings. Uh, Ramadan comes from a root of burning, comes from a root of uh, just being scorched. Uh, and, and when you think about uh, how iron is purified in a furnace. Uh, its impurities are taken out by a high intense flame. Um, and so we, 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 but it comes out a much more pure substance than it was when it went in. Um, when we take a look at Ramadan and what it presents for us, uh, it's that opportunity not just to just front load on so many uh, good deeds and to cash in um, on, on, on our investment here uh, as Muslims, but also a time for us to really have a month to ourselves to, to become better people, um, to really change who we are um, for the better. Uh, and that, that change goes not just in terms of spiritually, in terms of like, hey, I want to pray on time. Great. That's, that's one aspect. But uh, as Sister Yasmin's presentation showed, um, Ramadan is about mind, body, and soul. Um, you, 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 if you focus even so much on just one of those elements, uh, you, will, you will end up uh, sacrificing another element uh, at its expense. So if you really just invest all in on the spiritual aspects, uh, you may not give as much attention to uh, the mind or the body aspects. You may not be on as good of a uh, food routine um, as I've shown. You might not be you know, up for all those things that your body needs. So uh, the key thing that we would like to look at as, as we go through here is balance. How can we make Ramadan, our approach to Ramadan, one of balance? When we go hike up a mountain, there are some bare essentials that we need. Uh, we, we, we don't just go, you know, just dress kind of like how I am right now um, and, and with no shoes or anything and just go like, hey, I'm going to go climb Mount Everest right now. Uh, you, you need some essential things. Um, and so, you know, if you, if you don't have those essential things or you feel like, hey, you know what? I don't need shoes. I can, I, you know, my, my feet are good enough. I've got hard skin. Um, that, that will only do you so much good. 
Uh, so, so you want to balance it out um, because this is no ordinary month. This is an opportunity. Um, Ramadan was a month that the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ would look forward to um, many months in advance, and they would reflect on it many months afterwards. In a sense, they would uh, ask Allah to accept their Ramadan. For many months after Ramadan happened that, Ya Allah, may you accept our Ramadan. Um, Rabbana taqabal minna, that Allah accept this from us, um, because we don't know if we're going to get it again. Um, and each of us knows, um, if not uh, has, has felt this personally, but in our immediate uh, circle of contacts or six degrees of separation that we have, especially in this past year, uh, some folks who were with us last Ramadan who aren't, who aren't able to be with us this Ramadan. Um, and, you know, the, it just kind of ups the ante for us that uh, this is not an ordinary month, but inshallah, we want to make the most of it. Um, but uh, it, what what approach should we take to making the most of it? Is it is it in the sense that we just dump everything out at once and we just we just kind of uh, put our cards down and say you know inshallah we we were better people because we just uh, put up stats like LeBron and we were just we 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 brought uh, our our best game um, to to this month or was it that no as we went through Ramadan, however much of it we got, however uh, much or however little of it we got, uh, we transformed ourselves um, and so. Uh, when we look at Ramadan goals, when we, uh, my, my, my wife and I have this conversation all the time, um, just because in the sense that she's very detail oriented and ha and it's like all on the spreadsheet. So we'll have the spreadsheets open um, and be like, this is my goal for Ramadan. These are all my goals, um, you know, to do uh, X amount of uh, Salah, uh, to do uh, X amount of uh, Sunnah prayers, to do X amount of Tarawih or read this many uh, uh, pages of the Quran or Jews or whatever it might be. Um, so you, you have all these different goals. Um, and Oftentimes, I, I speak for myself uh, when I say this, oftentimes when we walk in with that goal and me myself here uh, coming in with such such like a large sheet and that, hey, I come into Ramadan, I want to read X amount, I want to do X amount, I want to do all this stuff, I want to do all this stuff. Um, I can probably keep it up for a few days. And then the one day I miss or the one day I get a hiccup on, um, that causes my rudder to really go just sputtering across the rest of Ramadan in the sense that I will now be probably uh, just trudging to that finish line because I might've started off really hot, um, but then life kicks in. Um, not just life, but so many things in the factor of life kick in. Uh, schedule, time is usually not on our side. Um, and so we usually sometimes, you know, start Ramadan off with such high aspirations um, and we we fin we're, we're right at E by the end of the first 10 days. Um, and we're just like, okay, how do we even make it to the end? Um, so, so we want to definitely take that same mindset. We don't want to diminish that mindset of like, hey, I want to get all this stuff done in Ramadan. Awesome. Let's work on how to do it. Um, but front loading it might not be the best strategy because of the fact that, uh, you know, you, you might burn out. You might have Ramadan burnout by the time uh, before even halfway through. So we want to prevent that burnout. Uh, but we also want to encourage uh, a, a holistic manner in which to kind of approach that. So looking at the baseline of Ramadan, is your Ramadan about stats? Is your Ramadan about how many prayers you can do or how many things you can fill up on a spreadsheet? Um, or is the Ramadan goal something a little bit more holistic? Um, does it have a baseline on something? And I like that uh, Sister Yasmin had mentioned um, the uh, like the journals, the dua journals, or just in general journaling. Um, one thing that it comes about this approach of Ramadan as uh, whether you take it as uh, you know a, a, a studied approach up a mountain and you check in with yourself uh, you can you you can track your own progress. You can stop, uh, take a pause, and you can say, like, "Hey, what have I done so far?" And we'll come to that in a second. Um, but just to, uh, just to, just as I, just as I had mentioned, that uh, our goal in Ramadan is maybe not so much like, "Hey." Uh, as much as it is, you know, maybe expressed in the sense that I want to do all of these things, I want to get all this stuff done, um, so much as it might be our holistic improvement that uh, we, we might be better um, Muslims, we might be better human beings that we were uh, than we were before we came into Ramadan. Um, and so keeping that goal holistic, but having practical ways to try and achieve that. Uh, but if it's just flipped the opposite way that, hey, Ramadan is just my, my uh, ticket to cash all my good deeds, and not that the, those good deeds won't count for you or not that uh, any of those good deeds will, will go to waste. They won't. Um, but how will you be transformed by this? How will you come out of Ramadan? Because you can go into Ramadan and put in, you know, 100% each and every day with all of your deeds and with all of the good things that you do um, and the prayers and all these things that you can probably put in a metric sheet. But how are you changed by the, at the end of that 30th or 29th night of uh, Ramadan? How, how are you changed as a person? Because if you go back to 
who you were um, on uh, the first of Shawwal as you were at the end of Shaban. Um, and Ramadan was just this like high, like, you know, just this peak that comes and then it just goes. Um, was it really a beneficial Ramadan? Was it something that really made a change? Uh, and so I want to really touch upon that. But a saying of the Prophet a very famous hadith that the best of deeds that are done are those that are done consistently and those that are done moderately. Um, and when we're doing something for uh, Ramadan, we make that intention that, you know, Ya Allah, let us do this uh, in Ramadan. Let help us, you know, do these, uh, do our extra prayers or even say our prayers on time, whatever it might be as, as baseline as we want to get. Um, but to allow us to not just do it at Ramadan, to allow us to do it for something uh, that goes beyond, that it is a goal that it's not just stops at Eid or just stops at the last night of Ramadan, but it's something that, hey, we take into Shawwal, we take into, uh, you know, Dhul Hijjah, we take afterwards and we just keep that with us. And so uh, when we make an intention to do a deed in Ramadan, uh, our intention should be that help us to incorporate this. Uh, not so much that it's just, it's it's there and it's in Ramadan and then it just dissipates there. But it's something that we do consistently. We do something moderately um, and we don't pull, uh, you know, tooth and nail to get it done. Uh, we, we we do what's within our capacity. Uh, you know, there's there's a, there's kind of a harrowing hadith by the Prophet ﷺ that says that, you know, some people fast um, and all that they get from that fast is hunger and thirst. Um, and and you, you can see even then him speaking to this mindset when we just rack up, when we just kind of walk in with the perspective of wanting to get our deeds um, to just count for us and just go in saying that, hey, I fasted. Great. Like, you know, what did fasting teach you, though? What did what did, what did you learn from fasting? What, what were some of the benefits if it was just like, hey, you know, I abstained from food for, you know, uh, 15 hours, 16 hours. And, you know, as, as uh, the days uh, get longer or so, um, we, 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 we uh, want to look back on what was our intention at that point. Um, and instead was fasting not maybe uh, a means of just checking off something in a box, but was fasting really a means of purification? Was it something more holistic? So we want to take a look at those deeds that we do and uh, the things that we aspire for in Ramadan, but not just on the point of uh, saying that we did them, but also what is the benefit there? Uh, Sister Yasmin pointed out some places that are doing that are we in person, if you're able to go or even just so many of these virtual events that are coming up. Um, what is the benefit of Tarawi beyond just the immense spiritual benefits that you have? There's the communal benefit and that, that so many of us have been deprived of for uh, the past year. Having community physiologically, mentally is something that boosts you. And remember, Ramadan is about mind, body, and soul. And if you just take one of those and run with it, you will you might leave one of those uh, on the back burner. And, and we want to keep everything consistent here. Um, so definitely keeping those things consistent, but also finding new meaning uh, in the in the really sacred acts that we do. When you do Quran, when you uh, do your Salah, what is there as well? Salah, you know, we, we hear so many good things about meditation. We hear so many good things uh, about just, you know, taking that time to pause for yourself. Um, what about adding that to your Salah or seeing your Salah as that meditation, that five minutes you get in a really busy day uh, and just to check in with yourself. Um, so seeing the benefits that uh, occur for um, these, uh, sacred acts that we've been given um, and going, seeing how much more we can actually get with them. Um, so like I mentioned, Ramadan is not just about um, goal dumping in a sense. Like, you know, we're, we're not just here just to rock crazy stats um, and, and, and what that, and, and, and just, just say like, hey, this is, this is what I did during Ramadan. Look at the stat sheet. Um, not to get me wrong, that there's, there is benefit in that. Um, but recognize sometimes how we feel at iftar time. How do we feel when it's at iftar time, how do we feel on Eid? How do we feel the day after Ramadan ends? Is the first thought on our mind that, oh man, I'm so glad like I, I can eat now. Like that's usually sometimes for me, that is my thought in the sense when I'm, when, it, when iftar time hits, I'm just like, oh my God, I can finally eat. Um, and so, you know, there, there's, uh, but the mentality is that, you know, what did I learn from that? Uh, and oftentimes me first and foremost here gets swept up in that, in that, uh, in, in the food aspect of it. And just like, oh, I haven't been eaten the, or eating anything um, that we, we, we kind of uh, drift away from what, what was Ramadan's kind of goal for us? Uh, what, where, 
where was that? We, we felt that burning in our stomach, but uh, did we have any empathy increase for the folks outside um, that might not have food? Or when we give our uh, zakat al-fitr, um, is it just like, hey, you know, this is just the thing I do, but what do we, as just you asked me, you pointed out, um, not just the organiz not just the uh, funds that we give, but also the organizations there. Um, what, what's stopping me as, as a Muslim from being a part of any of these things? These are other, you know, Muslims and other uh, human beings just going out there and doing what they can during Ramadan and during Eid uh, and helping other people. Um, what, you know, does it have to just stop at that? You know, just at challenging ourselves to keep doing better. And that's what Ramadan is really about is that it is a month apart from a month because you do uh, have the chance to and the, 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 the uh, cards are set in your favor to where you can be and do better. Um, but uh, like I said, it's, it's that, do we just take advantage of that one time? Um, do we, we, do we take that wealth and do we just spend it all at once? Or do we take that wealth that we are being given by Allah and invest it into the rest of our year, into the rest of our lives? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of like this uh, story that you might hear in terms of, uh, you know, a bunch of a bag of money or so being put in front of, of a baby uh, and a baby not really knowing what anything to do with it. But if you put uh, like, you know, just some toys in front of the, uh, the baby, uh, the baby will go crazy in the sense that like, oh my gosh, there's all these things um, because the baby sees the value of what is there. Um, if we see the value of Ramadan being put to us, if, if we alluded it in the fact that it's like uh, a tremendous amount of wealth that has just been put in front of you, um, some of us you know, might have the urge to want to just like spend it and just blow it and cash out. Um, others of us might want to invest it. And we want to see, we want to lift up that aspect of investing it. You can spend a little bit now, yeah, and improve yourself, but uh, we want to invest it in the long term. Uh, and so just kind of in closing here, just a couple things. Um, just to look at here. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, we want to um, above, above above all else, um, when we when we enter Ramadan, we want to enter Ramadan as if it is our last, um, and also to maximize what we can get out of it, but also what we put in. Um, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, famously narrates how de uh, deeds are multiplied during this time, and so we we definitely don't want to let any of our uh, good deeds go to waste. Um, so we want to we definitely want to have those multiplied, but what we put in won't be as substantive until we first and foremost put our whole selves in uh, and be present to the month. If we are just, like I said, if we're just uh, coming in for the Tarawis, if we're just coming in for just like the, the deeds aspect from it, but we, we're not like fully present. If we're standing in Tarawi and be like, man, this guy's going to take so like an hour and a half. How long am I going to be here? All right. You know, I did Tarawi today. I checked it off, but were we really in Tarawi? Um, when we were in Aftar with our family or with our friends um, or just, uh, you know, with whoever, um, who were we present there or were we just on our phones? Um, were, we, were we mindful to uh, the meal that had been given to us um, and the people who were around us or we, were we just kind of in our own bubble? So uh, you will only get as much out of Ramadan as uh, you intend to kind of get in afterwards uh, in the sense that if you go in all in, uh, get get all the good stuff uh, for Ramadan out of the way um, and, and and just really have a tremendous month on, on a stats end, um, but you don't notice a huge change um, in the following months, or you, you just see you kind of go back to where we were on square one. Sister Yasmin mentioned that we're, we, you know, we're all in different spiritual planes. So what we want to do is uh, we want to definitely know ourselves. We want to know our limits. We want to be gracious to ourselves. Um, so if we do go all in just because someone else would be like, hey, you need, you need to go all in like Ramadan, you cannot squander it. Um, that might look different for somebody else. Um, but the, the objective being that how do you come out of Ramadan? Do you come out of Ramadan with a huge stat sheet, but you went back to square one? Or did you come out of Ramadan with something modest, but you became a completely new person? Um, and even if you didn't go above and beyond in all the metrics areas, you still became a better person. Who had the better Ramadan in that case? Um, so first and foremost, definitely know yourself and know your limits. Um, be gracious to yourself, knowing that you are coming into this Ramadan or in any Ramadan with three people. You're coming in at least with three people with your soul. You're coming in with your mind and you're coming in with your body. And you are a caretaker to all three of them. Uh, and if you really do uh, just front load so much that the rest of your month loses balance and you just have to trudge to the finish line um, and find yourself exhausted in the first few days, um, it might be time to look at Ramadan, maybe not so much as that sprint or that direct race just to the top. Uh, it might be better now to look at Ramadan as that gradual uh, es uh, that gradual uh, escalation, that gradual climb up a summit, um, because 
some people, like I said, are, are like freaks of nature and athletes that, that will literally uh, be able to do some of these crazy things and just be able to, you know, go up to the top of a mountain or run a complete marathon and not even like, you know, uh, break a sweat or anything. But um, we, we want to be mindful of just ourselves as well in the sense that uh, Allah has given us this Ramadan and given us every Ramadan uh, in, in these in, in stages. Uh, you, you've, you've probably heard of the Hadith of the Prophet Sallam that Ramadan is in three parts, that the first part is of mercy. Uh, the second part or the second 10 days is of forgiveness. Uh, and the last part is of protection from the fire. So Ramadan itself is something that's already designed in stages. The first 10 days, you have these 10 days, 10 days, 10 days. Um, but just giving yourself time to, uh, as you look at uh, Ramadan as a summit to climb, um, you know, you establish checkpoints for yourself as you're going up. Um, so no longer are you just making one dash to the end and as you're maybe losing some things as you go, it was like, no, I've got to finish, I've got to finish and just running, uh, you make it a much more intentional experience. Um, so uh, li like, like was shown on the, the PowerPoint there, whether you start a journal or whether some other kind of reflective practice, use those checkpoints, not just as a time to be like, oh man, that was rough. Like how, how you know, how, how, I'm going to need some, some space for that. Take your space, but also be like, what did I do? Journal that down, write down what, what were you able to accomplish? How did it feel? Put, put yourself in conversation with your Ramadan self, because our Ramadan selves are sometimes these completely different like animals that are able to accomplish so much uh, and able to get up for like Fajr without like a, a minute's notice. And then like our Shawal selves are just like, oh my God, like this is, this is going to take like at least 10 alarms. Um, so put those two, those two uh, entities are in the same person. So put them in conversation with one another, establish that checkpoint to have that conversation with yourself, but also uh, with the divine. Um, use that time to, to connect with the divine, however it might be with you. Um, and then uh, at the least, you know, if we don't do a reflection daily, if you don't do a check-in daily, find a checkpoint for the Ramadan, if it's after the first week, after the first day, first 10 days, or even the first half, you know, break it down, but definitely don't neglect to check in with yourself, whether it's through one of those journals um, or with other people going through Ramadan, uh, through Muslim space and through uh, all the communities here that uh, Sister Yasmin listed. Um, that's the a, a number one element is that community. You have other people, even if not in person, virtually who you can check in with and you can, you can have this conversation with. So just remember, be kind to yourself. Listen to yourself. If uh, if you are just like, oh my gosh, like you know, um, I I'm just like trying to like crawl to the end of Ramadan. Uh, take that space. Take that space. You know, you don't have to miss a fast. You don't have to miss a prayer in order to um, kind of you know whip yourself into shape or just kind of feel shamed. Um, you know, you you want to be uh, mindful. You want to be mindful of what your body can do. You want to be mindful of uh, you know what what you as a as a as a Muslim are able to do. Um, so being mindful of that. So definitely eat sahur, follow those, some of those meal plans, you know, be kind to your body because your body is the vessel that is getting you through these 30 days in which most of the time is spent not eating um, and nourishing the body. Uh, and, and the rest of the time is spent in spiritual nourishment. So you want to create that balance. Uh, and lastly, uh, as we go through Ramadan, we want to embody the attributes Allah lifts up and Allah uh, himself uh, and uh, Allah self really puts uh, onto us as an example. Allah is uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah is uh, as-Sami. Allah is, uh, you know, the gracious, the patient, the sabur, al-Wadud. He's all these different attributes. Um, and But these attributes are not alien to uh, just Allah. They're not just Allah. Allah created uh, the world and created creation with these elements. And um, as human beings, when we act mercifully, we reflect that of our creator, that our creator um, bestowed this. As the Prophet ﷺ was known as uh, the uh, Rahmat al alamin that the most merciful, uh, the, the you know, the most merciful to all the creation, um, that we have a bit of mercy as well. Um, so when we are in Ramadan, we want to be merciful to ourselves and to other people. We want to be hearing. We want to be present to the uh, that which is around us. So you hear the qiyam that is going on. You hear the recitations of the Quran. You hear the prayers. You hear all of these really good vibes in Ramadan. Uh, a hearer as as a sami is is not just one that goes in one ear and out the other. Sami is one that takes it in and it it and understands and and is able to um, just. Uh, just able to process what has been said, but also doesn't just leave it there. Uh, but being patient, 
being loving. So taking these attributes of Allah, not just as that wallpaper that we all probably have in, in our homes and whatnot, but to embody those, try to embody those in our, um, in our Ramadan to make it a substantive experience. So inshallah, um, I, uh, I pray that uh, this Ramadan for you, um, if, if, a complete, if it's a completely different Ramadan from the one that uh, was before, the ones before, um, is one that at the least, if you don't rack up a crazy stat sheet, if you don't do every single goal that you've set out to do or do every single thing that you've done um, on a spreadsheet, that it is a Ramadan that you uh, leave uh, or enter the first day in and leave out the 30th in uh, as a better person, whatever that might look like. But if you can take in one good thing, absolutely one good thing um, from your Ramadan, uh, whether it's something Islamic or it's something that, hey, I just, you know, I say hello to people. I smile at somebody. I, 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 I'm kinder to people around. If there's one change you take from Ramadan, you have a successful Ramadan. And that's the first leg. But Ramadan doesn't end at that, at that summit. Um, Ramadan is, a, is, is, is preparing us for uh, one, one mountain that we've just climbed and preparing us for the climb that is the rest of our lives. So inshallah, um, I will uh, turn it over here to Sister Yasmin. I think we're, are we opening for questions now? Uh, yeah, we're opening for questions, but I just wanted to say, I love uh, the, you know, the um, emphasizing the importance of being merciful to yourself and being gracious with yourself. And um, two things, one, uh, something that helps me get in the right frame of mind uh, or helped me from when I was young was when I finally figured out that Ramadan is not something I am doing for Allah. I mean, it doesn't benefit Allah, right? I'm doing because Allah knows me and created me and um, knows that this is a benefit for me and made it mandatory for me because of that, right? Um, and so once I understood that, oh, this is something I'm doing for me um, to benefit me because that is part of God's grace and his, the way that he created us, um, it changed everything because I wasn't doing it because I had to, right? I was doing it yeah. because um, I was fortunate to be able to and it made it a lot easier. And the other is that I like how you talk about the stats and um, that Ramadan is not a competition. Like do not compare yourself to anybody else or your Ramadan to anybody else's Ramadan. It is definitely going to kill your joy, right? Like comparing your experience to somebody else kills your joy. And you know how I said, it, I am not Pinterest Ramadan woman because um, I, I'm happy with what we do. I'm, I don't need it to be something more. And it's not in my, uh, it's not in my nature and it's not who and how I am, but I love that I get to see other people do that. And I love that I have friends who do that. And like, bring me delicious things that they bake or, you know, like send me pictures of their awesome setup. Like that makes me happy because that is part of who they are. Um, but it is not, uh, you know, there is no space for comparison because that is their experience. They don't know what my experience is. I get to have my own experience and, um, comparison is not part of it. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. Those, yeah. So yeah. I would love to hear from everybody, what their thoughts are, what their questions are what's on your mind? How are you, how are you getting ready for Ramadan? What resources I missed that you guys know about? Share the knowledge, share the wealth. And you can just unmute or you can put it in the chat, whatever works better for you. We're not a huge group, so make feel more comfortable sharing. Sarah, who's that? This is Nuda. All right, Nuda, let's hear. Hey, how are y'all doing? That was beautiful, mashallah. Thank you, Yasmin and Usama, for all the amazing advice and resources. Definitely appreciated it. My question is how to... Uh, so when you work at a school or when you're at a school facility and you're around a lot of youth and you want to be that, you know, that... Um, that change or that have that good uh, impact on their life, especially our youth right now, they're going through a lot of hard hardship. It's not easy being Muslim right now. What's something that like we can do for them in Ramadan? Like, like we can connect it to Ramadan and like I can talk to them about it. Did you ask me? No, I would. So I think you do a lot, Nora, just in your, uh, your presence, right? Like showing them that joy, that connection, that um, experience. 
and then giving them an opportunity to kind of um, share in, you know, in figuring out what works for them, what would be um, something that made them happy or made them feel connected. Kids, especially older kids, uh, actually not especially older kids, all kids um, are amazingly um, uh, creative in knowing what works for them, knowing how to connect and how to express themselves. And so having that conversation and figuring out what would make them feel like Ramadan is happy and celebratory and something that relates to them and something that fills their soul and gives them connection and gives them a sense of belonging and that, you know, God created them perfectly as they are, you know, as a kid, one of, and even as an adult, I should say, um, one of our greatest needs is to feel, um, to feel connection with other people and to feel that we belong, right? We all want to have that feeling of being understood. And so creating an environment where they get that opportunity to build that and share what, what works for them um, is a great first step because then it, they tell you if you listen, right? And so you get to use that as the starting point to build something that will be relevant to them specifically. Mm-hmm. And I mean, so many things people like to celebrate, they like to uh, contribute to, they don't just like to receive things. There is a special mm-hmm. way that we get from giving. And so giving children the opportunity to know that they are powerful enough to also contribute is something that lasts a lifetime. You know, I knew you when you were little, Nura. So I know that when Absolutely. you were very little, you fasted from the time you were very young, right? And you have <laughs> pride in it, right? that you were mature, right? That you were responsible, that, you know, that that mm-hmm. was something part of you. And that's something so normal because that's something I felt as a kid too. You want to, you want to be in a place where your value and contribution and uh, autonomy is recognized and appreciated as well. Correct. That's what, that was great. Thank you so much. Inshallah, I'll implement it and put it into action as much as I can. Um, so the in the comments, it says, this is our second Ramadan during the pandemic. What's your advice regarding how to transition back to normal Ramadan next year, Inshallah? Are there things that you found to be beneficial during the pandemic that you wish to carry over? You want to go first, Osama? Sure, sure. Um, so I, I think for me, it's just in general, trying to get a concept of what normal is again, um, in the sense of just uh, that community and, 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 and whatnot. But I, as with anything, um, you know, there's, there's been so many changes probably uh, between uh, last year's Ramadan, probably with this Ramadan, and then a more fully embodied Ramadan. Um, that That's where that check-in kind of is in the sense that put yourself in conversation with yourself from Ramadan 2018 uh, and yourself now in Ramadan 2021. Um, what were some things that you missed? Talk to yourself about this in the sense that what were some things that you missed, um, whether you journal it or whether you just think it out? Um, what are some things that you missed, but what are some things that you've really enjoyed? Um, have you been able to connect with new people that probably would are not even in your zip code or in your state? Like what, what has a virtual Ramadan brought about for you? Um, and what has, uh, what was something about a normal Ramadan that you really wish? So, um, you know, we, we might have that temptation to be like, all right, you know, things are just going to go back to normal and we'll just jump in exactly as it used to be. But uh, as with any trial, as with any tribulation, uh, there are some diamonds in the rough that come about from this. Uh, if it's in the form of connections, if it's in the form of different people or programs that we found, um, you know, Sister Asmin showed in that PowerPoint, um, if not any other year, this year really shows you like uh, how accessible so many different like Islamic education and outlets are and whatnot. Like, you know, you might be uh, and previous to this, like probably uh, tugging like, you know, the, the, the emails out of like, you know, your shake or whatnot. Um, and now there's just so much that that is out there uh, in terms of other communities that have open space, uh, but other, uh, you know, just scholars, things like that. So um, it, identify with yourself first and foremost, what was that normal Ramadan like? What did you like about it? Um, but, you know, it, it, what we what we last the last thing that that might be a benefit is that it's a full pendulum swing because we want to use this Ramadan as uh, a springboard and even at last Ramadan, that might have been as isolating as it was as a springboard to how to improve our Ramadans going forward. So definitely uh, taking that in mind. And then uh, are there things that you found to be beneficial during the pandemic that you wish to carry over? Um, of course, I think that uh, the, the biggest thing being um, just connect connection to people 
um, just from anywhere uh, and also being aware of the resources that were there. I think before coming into Ramadan last year uh, and versus right now, it's just like if you ask something or just like be like, hey, what would be a good community or place for X, Y, Z? I can at least give you um, some kind of, uh, of a response in terms of like, hey, this would be a great resource. And that, that connection, um, as odd as it been in a disconnected time as this, has been one of the great things that has come about um, that, you know, I, that we can resource each other with so many different things, but also uh, just just to show us now, you know, the, the one benefit has uh, has also been seeing how much human interaction and community really matters. We get tired of people, we get tired of crowds, we get tired of like groups of people are like, oh my God, I want to see this person. And, you know, one thing that's been, sh that just kind of comes to mind, is like, you know what, I actually really do miss being in people, even if it's like with a crowd of people that might not be, be, be what I jive with. It's just like, there's, uh, you know, Islam teaches us that, um, that sociological, the psychological, and also the spiritual benefit of just being in the company of other people. And so um, this has been really beneficial to see with in, in virtual and inshallah, uh, even more so in, in person there. Yeah, I second that. And also I feel like um, last year during Ramadan, we had an awareness of uh, who was alone in a different way, right? I feel like there have always been people who've been alone in our community and uh, we just expect them to show up places and haven't really um, taken the time uh, and intentionally reached out to people and checked on them and make sure that you know, they know that they are part of community and that they're not alone. Um, and I hope that is something that we keep going forward, that we make that intention and that effort to check on each other, uh, especially those who, you know, who, who are by themselves, because it's hard during a pandemic, but it's also hard just in general. Uh, we are not just community with people who are exactly like us with the same family makeup as us and the same ethnic background as us and the same socioeconomic status, right? Uh, community gives us the opportunity to be so much more than that. And so being there for each other is something that I hope carries forward beyond the pandemic into, uh, into our daily lives. And also, um, same as Osama was saying, I really loved that Every sheikh in town was online and accessible in a new way. And you know that I could be making dinner and listen to our local uh, imam reciting Quran, you know, things like that. Um, I really appreciate and getting to hear the khatira, especially, you know, with it being later Ramadan uh, hours, later sunset hours, um, you know, where I might not have made it as much to the masjid um, during Aisha or things like that, being able to hear the khatira after prayer that I would have missed otherwise is something that I hope continues. I hope Masajid will continue to get their messages out there and online and share them and reach people where they're at, wherever they're at. So definitely that. Is there anything else anybody wants to share? Does anybody want to come on? I've got a question, Sister Yasmin, for you. All right. Favorite uh, suhoor dish and favorite iftar dish. Okay. Well, um, favorite suhoor dish has got to be a smoothie with chia seeds and peanut butter. And, um, you know, I, I don't care if it's five in the morning, I will get that Vitamix up and get it blending and get it roaring and, um, you know, throw some things in because it's so hydrating, right? And then for iftar, it's got to be shorba adas, you know, lentil soup. Like you got to, whatever it is, it's got to start out with saying, with, uh, with that uh, lentil soup. Um, and then, I don't know, I feel like um, there's this one uh, Arabic dish that I don't generally make. I think it's more Syrian. It's called shushbara and I love it. It is like delightful. Um, I think that is like a great a great um iftar. what about you well we're gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna need you to to, to add that to a slide um for, for <laughs> just means uh recommendations because i i'm like I, i'm over here on the opposite side of that that basicity <laughs> a spectrum um I, oh man like uh i 
I would think that I would kind of try and go a little bit more all out in terms of when it comes to Ramadan, at least for, for uh, Sahur. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I found that uh, the two bananas um, along with maybe some <laughs> scrambled eggs and cheese have, have gotten me through and have done, have done me well. Um, if, if star wise, um, uh, I, I would say, you know, I, I, I am uh, a sucker for uh, my mom's, uh, you know, pulao and the rice and, 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 and meat, but uh, I, I live right next to a halal bros. And that has been <laughs> a little bit tough to, to, to just have like a go-to dish, but alhamdulillah, that's the other thing of Ramadan is that people, um, you know, whether, even, even last year, it was just, you know, with our family, just people bring their A game. Um, and I think that, you know, it's just, it's just such, something beautiful in, in terms of even that, you know, there, there, there's, there's all, uh, obviously, you know, the conversation around food, but it's just like what, what life giving process that is for like someone like my mom who might not be able to uh, come out to the mosque every day or due to different mobility reasons or whatnot, but um, puts her heart and soul. And really it's, it's like Ibadah for her. It's literally like an act of worship to feed other people. And, and it is, um, but just to see, you know, those people, like you mentioned, I love that you, you lifted that up that uh, last year's Ramadan, if anything, teaches us uh, how, how some folks that might be uh, on our purview or not outside our purview, who we might not think about or who might be left on the margins, how that, they might be feeling. And, you know, I got, I got a really a good sense of just how, 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 it, how it affected my mom, but how life-giving it was for her to just feel like she just wanted to contribute to something and, and things like that. So, Alhamdulillah. But like I said, I'm going to hold you to that, to that slide, inshallah. We'll, we'll, we're going gonna, we're gonna to have those listed out there. <laughs> Hi. 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 Is that Khaled? Yeah. You How does your daughter day? Khaled, you know, it's almost Ramadan. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to in Ramadan? What do you like about Ramadan? That we get balloons. <laughs> what did he say? That we get balloons. <laughs> balloons. Balloons are very important. Yes, in Ramadan. That <laughs> celebration you part, you too? know, a lot of people say, oh. what do you say? This is Tutu. Do you want to say Ramadan Mubarak? <laughs> Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Two Mubarak. stuff I, I, about, I like about um, Ramadan. Ramadan. Uh-huh. One is that Shaitan. من حبس وبعدين الثاني الثاني ام take your time for the presents okay yeah. both great ones <laughs> definitely yeah. and it just shows like that though that celebration part of ramadan and eid is so important you know in creating yes. that love um for our traditions and everything from, you know, from a kid's perspective, those are the things that stand out. Absolutely. Inshallah, it will be a blessed Ramadan to everyone. And Shadi, I got you, girl. We'll have a shishbarak uh, day for a thought. <laughs> are you taking to-go order, Sister Nora? I'd be happy to uh, uh, sure, I got you. <laughs> we'll do it, inshallah. Why not? Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. I love food and I love feeding. Food is my love language. <laughs> I love eating food. That's my love language. So I do. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm done. Right. Is there anything else before we close up? I know we had a longer time allotted, but it looks like we've covered a lot pretty quickly. It was great. Thank you all for your time. It was amazing. Mashallah. I'm going to head yeah. out and can't wait for Ramadan with you all. Ramadan Mubarak, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak. Mubarak. Do you want to close us out with a dua, Osama? Sure, we we happy to. Or does Shadia have anything else sure. that she yeah, wants please, to Shadia, add? Yeah, please, Shadia. Do we have any announcements? Yeah, for Muslim's face or anything? No, no. You guys are doing great. Thank you so much. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, uh, please uh, join me in dua as you are comfortable, as you are able, um, and just you know, just let 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 us center ourselves, if 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 anything, at this moment uh, before we see Ramadan, inshallah, in just a few days. But. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار ربنا تحمل علينا إسرا كما هملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا يا الله we ask you for uh, so much on a, on every day, every moment that goes by, but uh, at this moment, ya Allah, we ask you to allow us to first and foremost see Ramadan. 
Uh, we ask you to uh, allow these smiles and these good conversations uh, to continue in Ramadan and to go beyond Ramadan. Uh, ya Allah, we ask you to allow us to uh, enter Ramadan uh, in a state of humility and to leave Ramadan in such in, in an even better state. Uh, and Ya Allah, we al ask you to allow us to multiply our deeds and do the best that we can as is, uh, as is appropriate for each of us. You know that uh, each of our scales looks very differently. You know that each of our stat sheets looks very differently, but at the end of the day, uh, our hearts always turn to you. And we ask that our hearts become become closer to you, become more enveloped by your love by the end of Ramadan as they did uh, when we started Ramadan. Uh, and Ya Allah, we ask that uh, this Ramadan, uh, for those who were not able to join us for this Ramadan, but were with us at Ra the last Ramadan, that you accept their prayers uh, and that you continue to accept their prayers and you make us a means for their prayers being accepted and to continue those. Uh, and inshallah, we ask uh, for your favor, Allah, and your protection that whoever may be suffering the effects of this pandemic from anywhere in, uh, around the world, um, that they may be able to uh, enjoy uh, a Ramadan, have a Ramadan um, that was the likes of before all of this happened. Uh, and if not, we ask that you let, enable them to enjoy a Ramadan that is to come uh, that will bear those fruits as well. Uh, we ask this in your holy name and inshallah, we ask that uh, you gather us uh, together on that auspicious day at the at the end of the line, um, just as you gathered us today, uh, and you keep those smiles going for us. Uh, and inshallah, you you make that this Ramadan is, if not anything else, uh, a moment for us to look back on uh, and say how much better we've become because of it. And it's all through you, inshallah, that we ask this. Amen. Zakla Khair, everybody. Thank you so much, Sister Yasmin, uh, for uh, Shadia for allowing us to have this space. But um, yeah, uh, uh, Sister Mehria, we'll definitely get those slides out um, uh, to, to you all. Um, but yeah, th this has just been really tremendous. Thank you, Sister Yasmin, again, and everybody for being here. I hope that it was of some benefit to you all. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>